So she's married to the rich guy, but sleeping with the gas station guy. But then the no wait. I'm not sure what the hell's happening here. I'm Jackie. Oh, what a difference the camera makes. I'm Sam. Maybe they could have gone with Cram Casey in the cooker. I'm Justin, and this is Stuff Stephanie in the Incinerator on Stinker Madness. Hello and welcome to Stinker Madness, a podcast about bad movies, more bad movie lovers, by bad movie lovers. I'm your host, Justin, with me, always saying Jackie. This week on the show, currently streaming on Tubi, maybe the other ones, uh, is Stuff Stephanie in the Cider Incinerator, a trauma release from Sam's Got the Year. 89 is 89. when Troma distributed it. Who knows when it was actually made? Before Starring that. nobody, directed by nobody. Well, uh, okay, Don maybe. Nardo isn't nobody. Okay, well, we'll find out who Don Nardo is, but uh, I guess that's our cue. Sam, tell us who Don Nardo is. Writer and composer Don Nardo. Sometimes actor. Sometimes actor. <laughs> he really is, like, actually Garth Marenghi, only yeah, right. more not silly about it like he's like no really i just do this um he didn't write a few books like you know those history books that you get in the scholastic uh magazine mm, like the books you order yeah from that like a lot of them are actual history books for youths there's a lot right. of nonfiction in there and okay. a lot of that shit gets put in textbooks or whatever but he wrote those books hmm. he wrote like 200 of them jesus He's won all of the awards that you can get for writing those type of books. And then somehow on the other end is like a fairly prolific composer as well, still taking commissions. And he did a commission for like Cape Cod Orchestra for um, War of the Worlds, did a long one for The Hobbit for a children's production where he actually did the uh, conducting as well. It doesn't, he doesn't really make sense because when you look at the volume of books he's written, it's like, well, how did you have time to do anything else? Yeah. And then as an actor, he seemed like he came with his own makeup kit. So, <laughs> is as, and you know, when you're, when you're doing mid level theater, if you're a guy that can show up and do your own makeup for high makeup parts, I mean, you're going to get gigs all the time. So right? he's the saint. Kind of, but like he just makes himself Brendan. older, crubby for like King Lear and shit like that. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So not like, yeah, I don't know. It just, when you're looking at this, you're like, oh, and then beyond everything else, I'm on his website right now. Mm. Pardopublishing.com. I am pretty sure he made his own website as well. Okay. I, I, is that a skill or are you like, ooh. No, I'm just because it's so, like, this is what people need to know about me. It's as if a no, no it's a very no-nonsense approach to, uh, here's a picture of me, this is all the shit I did, you can click over here, but there's no, like, anything in the bottom corner. And then he says, the only thing at the bottom is that I'm always updating this, so it's like, and he just made his own website, too, because why fucking pay anybody to do that? It's not that yeah, hard. Whatever. Yeah. Man after my own heart. Cheapskate. Yeah, cheapskate. It also sucks that his name is... When your name start when, you, when the first name ends and the last name starts with the same letter, mm -hmm. your name gets mashed together and you Denardo. can't do anything about it. Donardo. Yeah. And he couldn't... If he was Donald, the consonant still ends in the same tongue shape. So mm -hmm. Donald Nardo still has the same problem. <laughs> And you definitely wouldn't want to go by Donnie Nardo. No. <laughs> so he's Don isn't, Nardo. Isn't Don Pardo the like one of the famous guys of network broadcasting? Yeah. Yeah. So you're. But also... that's not the same thing. It's no, I know, but I mean, like, hey, Don Pardo. No, it's Nardo. You're Donardo. Donardo. Don Pardo does that works, but Donardo like does not. <laughs> Robert. Bostwick, if he went by Bob, Bob Bostwick, Bob Bostwick, <laughs> you can't do anything about no. it. I was trying to like think what, and I tried a bunch of different first names with Nardo, and they mm -hmm. all run into it. Like Nardo is just the last name that no matter what your first name is, it's going to run into it. 
And Ulysses was the one that I came up with that doesn't run into <laughs> Ulysses, Ulysses Nardo. Um, maybe his wife is named Poppy. <laughs> Poppy Nardo. <laughs> it's not. Her name isn't. She's on here and so she's on the Judith. website. And so are his dogs because okay. he uh, loves him a, a, a Labrador retriever. Mm. Um, I can definitely tell because there's nothing really about this movie. Troma bought it. Why did Troma buy it? Well, I don't think anybody else would at that point. Sure. And with when you go back to right around that time, Troma is still doing their own distribution. They have their own dubbing stations upstairs that the executives sometimes are running themselves just to keep the machines running and keep crap getting mailed out for the catalogs. Um. When you get a deal with trauma, like with this movie or whatever, you'd be like, okay, yeah. And then they could just put it in the catalog and can send it out by actual orders from the catalog or just like make 500 of them and just send out 500 on a whim and just be like, we'll cut you in on it, but we're not going to like buy this from you. And most people would be very agreeable to those terms because this shit was shot on beta cam and I can definitely tell there was even confirming my suspicion about halfway or three quarters of the way through. There is a beta playback deck that was a broadcast playback deck playback only not part of the editing setup, but on screen and it's like oh, okay they had used a beta for their dailies they had a little playback deck for their dailies but this was shot on beta cam and this is honestly as good as you can get it to look on beta cam for the most part i mean you can get those higher end beta cams that and this is probably a pretty high end beta cam this is like a new station's beta cam and you can get a really expensive lens for it but the other problem with making it look better is that how much money can you spend on lights? Mm -hmm. Cause you're looking at a TV setup with a beta cam, even if it's a beta cam SP, which was out by this point, um, which bumped it up considerably to a crisp 380 lines of resolution. Ooh. Yeah. Sharp. <laughs> like the TV. Um, yeah, even if it was an SP, those things are thirsty and they don't shoot in low light. So, uh, airy light kit is like $5,000. You're looking at a news station having two or three of those. And that's like, I don't know, 10% of the amount of lights that a TV or the a network is using to shoot a sitcom, right? Mm -hmm. There's going to be a hundred fucking lights on a set for a sitcom to get it to look that good. And they're using, it was still analog, but it was tube cameras and not um, CCDs to uh, magnetic tape. So it doesn't look good, but to somebody who's used a beta cam, you went, wow, these guys got every ounce of that beta cam they could get. <laughs> that looks pretty goddamn good. And it's just like, Filled with all of the problems that you have when you shoot something with beta cam and it's a news team is how many medium shots just waste to head. There was so many waste to head shots in this goddamn yeah. thing. Yeah. It's not a good shot. It's but not, if you're trying to do what you're they're trying to do and you have their setup, you're like, we're going to need to just get a bunch of medium shots here. That's why mm -hmm. we're going to tell this story. And that the resolution of the camera is not really great for that. Like, that's right where it starts to get a little fuzzy, is that your resolution is breaking up on a waste-up shot because they're not that great. And it was, you know, it's probably a $100,000 fucking camera back then, or 50 anyway, right? Right. Um. So that's... At this time, you actually can kind of look at this movie as one of those telling pieces of when equipment was a gatekeeper to the medium. Like, you couldn't make a movie if you didn't have a million dollars because it was impossible 
Because if you were going to make a good looking movie on film, one, you'd have to pay a guy that can run the fucking camera and rent the camera. But you're looking at $30,000 for just film and processing before you even get your first uh, work print that you can make copies from, which was another 25 grand. Hmm. So you could, if a television company had the ability to run its own production house where they sold commercials and corporate videos, you could hire them to shoot your movie and edit it for a fraction of those film costs. Even if this wasn't done on a friendly, like friends business, he could have probably been like, I know it's not really going to be your normal field rate, but will you guys do this for me for 10 grand? And they probably would be like, yeah, we'll do it for 10 grand. And you could get this level of production for that, which would have been, and it looks like 10 grand versus a million, obviously, but that's now in today, people can shoot a fucking movie on their phone for the most part, because the technology is so readily available to almost anyone. Versus Back in before. my day, that's what you sound like. Urgh, the kids these days, they don't even know how hard it was. Urgh, urgh. All right. Are we ready to get into the Stephanie stuffing? Are we stuffing her in this bitch, this podcast bitch? Are we stuffing her? Are we doing it? Stuffing her. Nice beaver stuffed. <laughs> what? <laughs> Naked gun. Okay. Oh, Remember uh, a nice beaver, and then I, I think I they it. just had it stuffed. You're just saying stuff Stephanie's beaver. I mean, with what? I can only think of one thing. Cotton. Formaldehyde. Those okay, that's two starch things. Starch packing peanuts that you can eat but are mm. gross. I believe that's how taxidermy works. Okay. Um, God, I don't even know how to do this stinking thing. Like, because we've got people... And they're not people that are the people in this movie. But we're just going to go how the movie presents itself uh, with a guy named Paul. I Paul... thought it was Tom. Pa- Palm? Tom. No, no, no. His name is when Paul. he's the His airplane guy? Yeah, he's Paul at the beginning of this movie. Uh, Paul. Spoilers. Uh, he is a, an airplane engine mechanic because he's got his arms stuffed into the engine of a prop plane late at night like and there's guys the other thing is that there's guys that are like hey paul have a good night thanks for being our number one mechanic paul you're just the best mechanic ever uh and then they leave yeah they're like are you gonna burn the midnight oil and he's like if you want this thing to not crash and kill a hundred families then yes yeah i don't (laughs) it's not like i work for boeing or something (laughs) <laughs> no, I actually, I actually put the bolts in. But just leave a wrench in here and yeah. fuck off somewhere. Boeing. Oh, I, I should. I, I got to tell this story. I don't know if I've told this on the podcast. It's hilarious though. Um, it, it, to date things a little bit. About a year ago, I bought this heap of a Dodge truck. Like I'm talking, it was a piece of shit. And I'm like, oh, it's super cheap. It's got what I want. I'm gonna fix it up. So I, I, I'm deep into it. I mean, this is like a month's long project. And one day I take all the panels off of the back uh, interior to put in new speakers because the speakers were blown. So um, you have to take a bunch of shit off to get at these freaking speakers. And as I'm pulling one of them off, I'm like, why is this jammed up? Sure as shit, there was a fucking torque wrench nice. jammed into the wall and it had the Chrysler logo on it. Some monkey at freaking chrysler left their tools in my truck when they built it that's incredible i still have it i put it up on the wall because a little fun reminder like ha, 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 fuck you lee iacocca <laughs> <Your car sucks. laughs> lee was gone by that point um okay so there's there's paul he worked he's at working at the the hangar airplane hangar well two trench coats come in and they're like hey uh we're doing stuff to you because they don't really explain their motivations. Like give me all your money or anything like that. They just kind of pin them up against the wall or the plane. And they, uh, kind of, I guess a little bit jostle him and steal his class ring, which I think is what he's got on. It's an, and it's an insignia ring. What rich bastards wear them. And drug dealers. It seems like they kill him for his class ring is what it looks like on screen, but that's not what happens. 
Yeah, yeah. It seems like they kill him because that's why note. And then they kill him, but they don't. Uh, he wakes up. They put a plastic bag over his head. They put it, you, that's not how you knock a guy out. That's how you kill a guy. Yeah. For his class ring. For his class ring. <laughs> <laughs> Paul's dead. He didn't make yep. it. Class of like, 73. Go Chinookers. Highly oh, sought he, after item. Yeah. Oh, he passed out. Take the bag off, his he- off of his head. We're good, right? I got no pulse. This guy's dead. <laughs> Shit. I guess leave him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. At that point, he's just dead weight. Literally. Okay. Well, he wakes up and, and he's dressed in a tux and he's in a mansion. He has no idea where he's at. He's all confused. And he wanders around until he finds a, a sleeping lady. And this is Stephanie. She's sleeping awkwardly in bed. And he gives her gentle kisses. And they uh, ride off on a pony into the sunset. Because I don't know. Uh, no, he, he uh, uh, she wakes up. And she's like, hey, Paul. And he's like, Paul, how do you know who I am? Who are you? Where am I? What's going on? And she's like, well, let's go look around. So they go wander around the house. And uh, the dinner bell rings. And in the dining room, oh, she's spewing some nonsense about Martha or Roberta, Roberta. Like, oh, Roberta's going to be excited to see that you're awake and dressed. And he's like, why am I in a tux in a mansion? Who are you? And what am I doing here? Uh, And they go into the dining room and they meet Roberta, who is clearly a man. I mean, let's just get it's obvious from the get go. For the first 20 minutes of this until like Roberta starts on her diatribe. I'm just like, has he been kidnapped or does heaven just suck bad? Yeah. Right. Cause is Cause he, he I can't tell if he's dead or not. He, and if he he's dead, died. I'm like, man, heaven sucks. He, ugh. Ugh. He's living in his own private hell. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is boring for purgatory. So there's a bunch of food there, too. Uh, and she's like, oh, Paul, have some food. And and literally, Roberta sounds just like my lady impression. Like, boom. Well. But a little bit like borderline British. What's that accent? Like the old, it's not old English, but like, it's like the East Coast, nor- the New Englanders when they try to sound fancy. or they, The Queen's you know, English? Yeah, maybe. Uh, oh, hello, Paul. She doesn't. It's not a British accent. It's an American accent, but there's got to be a name for it. It's the snooty East Coaster. Yeah. Just yeah. call it that, because that's what it is. It's like you throw in a little bit of an English accent mm-hmm. on certain phrases or words, but you're essentially just speaking American English. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, she's like, oh, well, now that you're awake, I'd like you to uh, bone this lady. And he's like, <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Her? The sleeping chick? Yeah, right now, right in front of me. Do it. He's like, look, I'm, I'm not saying I don't have a huge raging boner right now because of Stephanie. I mean, I'm all about what she's throwing out. Like, the vibe is good coming from her. You, however, are a, a boner deflating a lump of a man-ish goop. And I don't want to have anything to do with sex and you in even if you're like behind a screen uh the fact that i'll know you're there makes me so unhorny that even stephanie's hot tots can't uh do much for for what's happening in my in my in my pants you'd be holding a poster of cindy crawford in front of yourself and i would still know you that you're back there yeah because i you're mannish your voice is annoying and you've 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 got an Adam's apple. Not that there's anything wrong with man on man action, you know. I'm a I'm a modern guy, but uh you No, he's he's playing the part of a a chauvinistic grease monkey guy who mm-hmm. is not going to entertain old ladies or men. Okay, well uh, I'm just gonna let you know that the, the my main problem is that you look like John Elway with a with like who stuck his face in a bowl of mashed potatoes. I mean, but he's acting uh, like that like Roberta is a real woman. 
Right, 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 right. She's an old woman, right? right? right. A, a real woman, Jackie, could look like John Elway, who smashed his face into a bowl of mashed potatoes. It's possible. Are you being sexist right now, saying that women can't be as ugly as John Elway with the bowl of mashed potatoes on his face? Jeez. I mean, I, I'm i not – I've seen some ugly women. Yeah, yeah. Well, Roberta's, uh, and Roberta's up there. And I've seen some ugly, ugly men. So there you go. I mean, when not I came in – Not everybody can be blessed with your hair, your and we, Sam's hair. When you when I came my in, my hair you, sucks. You shook Your's my hand. Great. Well, I mean, it's great because I still have it and I'm old, but so I guess I should just be happy that I have hair. Yay me! Yeah, uh, shut the hell up, dude. There are a lot of bald guys out there that are right now are like, "Fuck you, Sam." Look, Roberta. The thing is, your ass is okay, but your hands are like scratchy, like like sandpaper, and they're like very knuckly. Uh, you've got wrist hair on your hands because except you know, for where your watch was, you, yeah. you're more careful taking off your wrist watch, Roberta. It also seems like you uh, wear a ball cap a lot, like a baseball cap, like a men's ball cap. You know, your hair's all matted, like uh, you you were just out uh, messing around with the with the boys, tossing the old pigskin around. Was that was that a thing that you? Uh, no, okay, you're a lady, huh? All right, well, uh, either way, I'm not fucking this lady in front of you. It's not happening. Well, then uh, uh, you're trapped here and you don't have a choice because all the doors are locked. He's locked in this sexcapade house. And he's sexcapade, like, oh. like, and it's not like weird sex dungeon. It's worse mm-hmm. because it's like prim and proper sex dungeon. Yeah, <laughs> like... Now you will make this sex to her. <laughs> and you're like, um. In the only position that is allowed. Those guys are just wearing Neiman Marcus suits. What the fuck? This is just like bone this lady in a normal house. I'm going to watch. This is strange. Like if you were had some like fucking masks and that guy was dressed like a furry or something, I could get behind this. But. It's just too yeah, ordinary got- for a sex dungeon. Sorry. Yeah, and you know we should probably mention that she's got muscle there, and it's the same guys that kidnapped him from yeah. the air. The hangar. Yeah. Yeah. The airplane. The airplane. The airplane kidnapping. Where he's the number one mechanic. Uh, yeah. We should note that one of the muscles. Uh, this is not a. Uh, a house with long hallways say where you've got a lot of room to run and you need a you need a weapon that can uh sight <laughs> down a man at 200 yards this is a, a a small room where i would say maybe a handgun uh or a shotgun at the top end would work best he's got a long rifle yeah he's got a hunting rifle i it looks like maybe a 30 out six uh, and he's like sticking in Paul's face and stuff like, I'm going to shoot I, you with this hunting rifle. Dude, you're going to miss. It seemed like it was like a uh, repeater, like it was semi-auto. So I'm thinking like 223 is the top end. This is not the this is not the tool for the job where they're no. at. That's for sure. Y- you've got a point in my, I'm just going to take it away from you. Like it's, it's. It looks very much like a rifle that has use at 75 to 125 yards. And that is it. Yeah, yeah, not not what you need here, tough guy. Um, okay, uh, let's let's go back though to the sexy. Uh, you run around, all the doors are locked. There's a guy with a gun. It's a, the wrong gun. Whatever. Uh, within the context of what we know about the movie so far, say you're single. Say you're Paul. Would you just do Stephanie? Would you just be like, okay, whatever, fine, immediately? I would get weird. I would. I'm like when I said you guys aren't weird enough for me here. I'm. I'm putting me in there. I'm like, aren't you gonna dress up strangely first? Heavy leather. So, I mean, give me something to make it seem like this isn't weird. Because oh, you want because it's not weirdness. weird. It's making it so much weirder right now. I don't think I can perform. Like if she comes out with a gimp mask and then yes, the, the, okay, and then that, then you're like, okay, this seems like okay. Fine. Yeah, you've got a gun on me. You're all mm-hmm. fucking freaky about it. I'll get down. This is cool, but because they're just normal people, dressed normally, and it's a normal house, I'm like, what gives? 
what's going to happen here if I do this? Because you're not like if he was dressed like a duck, maybe I would be fine. Mm -hmm. If you were holding a nine iron and there was like a a bucket of ice over there, maybe like there's nothing here that's (laughs) weird and it's freaking me out. Nice little Billy Madison reference there. Uh, Jax, what, what would you do? Uh, I would probably want to play a board game or something, you know, kind of get to know these people, <laughs> okay, get in, right. you know, get into some groove, you know, mm-hmm, kind of mm-hmm. make a connection and, and then do it. Okay. So you're, you're taking but the I'm approach like kind of Florida Sam. swingers. That's how Florida swingers do their, their thing is they play a board game first, have maybe a little, a couple espressos. But I'm kind of with Sam. I, I would also expect some kind of costume. Okay. What if, uh, like, do you think Roberta would go for it if you asked? Like, hey, uh, could you uh, dress up like Mayor McCheese for this? Yeah. Is that something? I don't think, I think Roberta would do whatever. Yeah. yeah. Right? Right. See, I mean, That's, Paul but, is being pretty uncooperative here. At the yeah, very I mean, least, you got to be like, how much tequila do you have? That too. Yeah. You start drinking, you loosen up during the board game, mm-hmm. and then you're like, all right, where's the costumes? Right. Well, I'm afraid we only have ginger ale. No. I'm out. (laughs) The only other costumes I have are other old lady dresses. God damn it. I can put on a sweater. (laughs) You're held at gunpoint. You've been kidnapped. Do you Uh, just do it and get it out of the way? Or, you know, do you have a different approach? Or we just be like, all right, right here on the table. Good. Let's just do this. Look, I've been in weirder situations where I've banged, so this isn't a problem. For me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> I've been in some weird spots. And you just got to go for it, because uh, if you don't, you're going to regret it later. Like, uh, God, I had a chance to nail Stephanie. Instead, I ran around the house trying to be like, no, don't bang a pretty lady. What the fuck was I thinking? Yeah, no, you just do it. Um, okay, so uh, where are we at? Uh, he runs around the living room, and uh, Stephanie puts... Uh, oh, God, my notes are all wet, and I can't read them. Um, Ste- she, she, does she drug him? Because my next note is, it makes him fall asleep. Is that what, what happened? I, know, I couldn't tell if he was just tired or what. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, he wakes up. No, from I, a nap. I think that he does get drugged because okay. he's like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. And she's like, oh, Paul, you're not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. And then she tries to give him a necklace. Or is that after he wakes up? No, I, I got no clue. Um, anyway, he wakes up and uh, Roberta has been watching him sleep. Like she's just standing there. I watched you while you sleep. Did you have dreams? At which point I'm like, okay, Stephanie? this is getting weird. Where's Stephanie? I can bang her now. Yeah, right? It's <laughs> freaking out for Sam now. Um, so he's like, uh, I'm going to kill you if you don't let me out of here. And uh, the the dudes appear out of nowhere. I, like, okay, the dudes appear out of fucking nowhere. Like, they're jump cuts, but they're they, not there. Then they're there. Like, there's magic involved. Or there's, secret passageways, at least. And they're not even thugs. They're, like, just... Roberta's men, and they're, like, barely that. These are, like, aged, seen some action as butlers men, and they just have yeah. appearing powers. Yeah, 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 they're not they're not tough guys. They look like they might host game shows. Like, one of them is the president of the VFW, and the other one mm-hmm. runs a bar. Yeah. At the VFW. Oh, yeah, so here's where she gives him the chain. She's like... Here you go. Here's some. Give this to Stephanie. It's worth sixty thousand dollars. And uh, uh, he starts like ranting about her crimes. And they're like, oh, "I'm gonna get you arrested with the FBI for kidnapping, uh, assault, attempted murder. Uh, not any, you know, brainwashing. Uh, you, you've been brainwashing yeah. Stephanie. That's a crime, is it? I don't think it is, Paul." Otherwise, dubious hosting. Jail. Yeah. Dubious hosting. <laughs> uh, and, uh, oh, God, I got another wet note. Uh, they 
vanish. Oh, the va- the, the men, so, they all, including Roberta, goes poof out of thin air. When does the thing happen where she's explaining her day? And she's like, he's like, what do you, how long have you been here? And it seems like it's been countless years, but her day is that every day of the week she makes a rug or a tapestry of some sort. And then on no, the her seventh dress. day, her she dress. unmakes it so she, that she can uh, she, just make it again. And it's like, that's, what the fuck? Stephanie's, what she does, she's because she's been kidnapped for God knows long. She says something about last summer and she's like, oh, yeah, every day or every seven days I unweave my dress and then I weave it again. So I'm pretty. But then she says she uses "Ah." different colors. And you're like, well, why unmake it? If you've got all these different colors, just make another one. Make new ones. Have multiple. (laughs) She's rich and weird. She'll get you more thread, I think. Come on. Uh, Some amount of time has passed after this conversation. He's like, "Uh, okay, you've been kidnapped. You've been here for too long. This is like one of those uh, Kimmy Schmidt deals, I'm guessing. Uh, am I the first guy that has had to? I don't know. Um, no, nope. no, no. This okay. is definitely a sex trafficking situation. Okay, so if I, but she uh, really doesn't seem to mind. She's no, just like Stephanie's, I don't, Stephanie's cool with it. Yeah, she's like, dude, I was living in the homeless shelter, and yeah. now I'm living in a mansion, and well, I she doesn't do whatever remember. the hell I want. She she's so brainwashed, Jackie. She doesn't even remember who she is or where she came from. And he's because he's like, there's people out there that love you and want to, you know, want you back in their life. And she's like, I don't know anything about that. I know dresses and banging so many men, so many men. And I don't know what happened to them. One day they just went away. The bang hole post bang hole. Yeah. Yep. (laughs) Just a pile. There's a mass grave in the backyard. Or Roberta's like, good banging. We'll see you later. Enjoy just your day, sir. out of that door that <laughs> just <laughs> walks off and falls in a pile of bodies. Uh, okay. Um, so uh, t- some time passes, and he's snooping around, and he finds this dagger, and he's like, Stephanie, get in here. And she's suddenly like, oh, what's up? And he's like, sticks the dagger in the power outlet and shorts it out and she's like oh the lights are off wait a minute i want to escape now okay let's go so they run around and uh they're trying to find a way out and because it's light out or it's dark in the house nobody can see and they climb up the chimney like santa like yeah there's no way to do this unless it's just like the house hasn't been renovated ever yeah, it's, it hasn't been renovated or modernized since, like, the 1700s, mm-hmm. because flus are a thing. Yeah. Yeah, and it's also bigger on the inside. Like, they're not going up one at a time. They're in the same position at the same time, uh, horizontally, or vertically, so uh, there's no room. There's no room in chimneys. It's, you can't climb a chimney. Chimney is bigger than the fireplace in terms of yes. its dimensions. It is the TARDIS. Um, and they get out and there's dogs barking that they hear and they're being, we can't see a goddamn thing what's happening. So we have to infer a lot of this, but they, they're trying to get away from these dogs that they hear and they run into a shed. It looks like, but it's not a shed. It's actually the basement. I guess maybe the storm cellar or something. They just, yeah, they end up in the basement, which concludes escape to make outville. And they're like, we'll hide here until the dogs leave. <laughs> Where are the dogs going to go? Yeah, I mean, it's not like they're, they live well, there. we're on duty until 6 a.m. And then we have to go back to the kennel, you know? Yeah. The whole work horn blows. And they walk up to the little machine and punch their card and put on their, take off their hard hat and put on their regular hat and leave the docks. That's not how dogs work. All right, Phil. See you tomorrow. Tell the missus. Uh, bye. Congratulations yeah, the, on your litter. Yeah. Dog, like, the progress meeting. How many asses did you bite today, Rex? Yeah. How many asses did you bite yesterday? I feel on like you could be biting f- more asses. 
on the waterfront, starring Sparky and <laughs> Fluffy. <laughs> Instead of yelling Stella, they're just like, bark, bark, bark. <laughs> Look, pancakes, you've been here for six months and you've only bitten four asses. Yeah, right. We all like we you, but you you're go. not biting enough asses. <laughs> we got to let you go. And then uh, pancakes ends up like uh, doing a whole taxi driver sequence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Going to go on the rap page. Falling down, starring <laughs> pancakes. <laughs> pancakes, the dog. <laughs> Okay. Midnight pancakes. <laughs> Midnight pancakes. I'm walking here. I bet the <laughs> dog. That's all I do. <laughs> okay. So uh, it seems like a good time to bang for them. Like, hey, sure. I've been waiting for nobody to stare at me while I'm a sleeping and b banging. Let's do both right now. We've we weren't covered in soot earlier, so let's bang now. Good thing somebody left dirty... a mattress in their crawl space. Yeah, like. Weird. But so if they, they flipped it over, they would have seen the blood stains. Yeah, right. From the yeah. last guy. <laughs> mm. Or the shit. Um. Anyways, later, Roberta flicks on the lights down there while they're sleeping, and it's like, ah, oh, I watched. I saw you guys do it. He he he. Sorry, yeah. Paul. <laughs> Roberta has seen your penis. And why, like, their plan is lame. Like, okay, we mm-hmm. couldn't figure out a way out, so we're going to hide in the basement and bang, and then tomorrow we'll escape better than we did today. Yeah. Because yeah. there's going to be more options tomorrow. Yeah, there's not. They're taken back to the house. And uh, Roberta says that, uh, well, you did a real good job. I mean, you stuffed Stephanie up with not taxidermy stuff. Uh, that beaver, beaver got penis, actually. And I liked it. So, do me. Yeah. No! Not man hands! He calls her a warthog. Mm-hmm. I think you could call her a lot of things, but she doesn't really look like a warthog. Yeah. No. The old warthog, I'm not screwing you. Oh, really? Well, how about we put Stephanie in the Iron Maiden? Wait, what? 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 You yeah, have an Iron Maiden? been hanging out in the background the whole time. And I noticed that it's like, what is this weird thing with the sheet on it? Right? Every time he's in that room. But I was like, okay, well, they're going to reveal it eventually. And then I was like, an Iron Maiden? Really? That's what's here? First, he's like, oh, cool, dude. I love Run of the Hills. Number of the Beast? Any- anybody? Yeah. Iron Dickinson Maiden. would have done a better job working on that plane. Okay, we're just gonna. Okay, all right. Somebody's all right. like, dude, fucking, yeah, fucking Eddie, man. Bill and Ted S- were like, awesome. S- sick Iron Maiden reference there, me boy. <laughs> me boy. <Okay>. Check. <laughs> Jackie's like, who's Iron Maiden? <laughs> um. Okay. So well, they, yeah, I'm looking it up right now. You're looking up are Iron Maiden. You, are you fucking kidding me? Are you kidding me? It's one you, of Sam's favorite songs to sing. I know that much. No, it's the, not. I cannot hit the Dickinson notes. I just fucking can't. Sam he sings loves high. to sing the song Iron Maiden. Is, is that what that? No, what he you likes just to sing that. Da-na, 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 da-na. That's War Pigs by Sabbath, you ignorant it's bastard. Like, wow. Jesus. Not even the oh. same genre of metal. Is Iron Maiden even metal? No, it's their fucking poetry, man. Yeah, and these people are Sabbath proto metal, really. So. Look at all these skeletons. Yeah, dude, Eddie's oh, fucking cool, zombies. man. Yeah, no, Eddie's no. Okay, you know what? Like, You're gonna need to spend some time on Iron Maiden on your own time. It's gonna change your life. You're gonna be like, holy shit, what have I been doing the previous 40 some odd years? I have should have been listening to these guys, but that we'll do that. You can do that later. Okay, so this week, why I'm at work, I'm Maiden. gonna tell. My, my buddy, my my Amazon buddy, uh-huh. to play Iron Maiden. Yeah, dude. and see what just happens. do Spotify so you don't have to like not listen to what you're trying to listen to. No, she'll do it. You, we have actually so uh, Amazon Music I will pay. actually play the entire like you can say the entire disc. Like yeah, that's we what have Spotify every does too. album ever. Yeah, but no, Spotify has the commercials and they don't pay artists very much money. Amazon pays oh. really well. Use Amazon. 
okay, anyway, fine. Yeah, I mean, they I usually think I don't pay, have like, it. It's like, yeah, it's like the, it, the artist gets like two bucks for fucking play, man. It's a lot of money that Amazon pays out. Maybe not that much, but it's a lot more than Spotify and Pandora. I, I and I think into it's this. only, I think it's only like twelve dollars a month for unlimited access to every album ever. Yeah, and I, okay. everybody in my house can be playing music at the same time. And I had to do it because this one time I was out running mm-hmm. and my music kept turning off. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? And so I'd pull out my phone. I'd stop, you know, I'd pull out my phone. I'd start it again. And I would, you know, get another couple of minutes out and then it would happen again. And I realized that my son was also listening to music at the same time and and telling his device to play music every time it stopped, not realizing that I was out running playing the music too. So hey, now I, I pay for it. Hey, well, Sam, you remember? Should like we do three, like a Domino's ad while we're at it? Yeah. Do you remember like three minutes ago when we were talking about Iron Maiden, and now we're not? Yeah, we're doing an um, ad for Amazon Music, so we should do yeah. an ad for Domino's. Yeah. It's not very good, and it's not very cheap, but if you're drunk, you can make it happen usually. <laughs> Dominoes. <laughs> Says the guy who's never even tried it. Whatever, we're moving on from Amazon Music. It was my Iron Maiden joke, and it was sweet. It's their rule. Okay, Um. so she's in the goddamn Iron Maiden, because yeah. they have one. Yep. And uh, did you guys know that the Iron Maiden wasn't even really a fucking thing? Nobody ever, they had them, but nobody used them, because they were like, this is fucking stupid. Just put them on the rack. The rack just works better. Um. It just really wasn't a very commonly used torture device. Um, but it sounds cool. It's an Iron Maiden, yeah. Uh, so he's like, no, don't kill Stephanie with an Iron Maiden. That's just put her on the rack. It doesn't make sense. Um, so he's like, okay, let's do it, Roberta. He's got his tongue out and it's point. He's like, oh, gross. And then Roberta's like, wait, hold on. Do I really have to do this? Do I have to make out with with Paul? He's a man, and I'm a man. Because he's... Roberta was Robert this whole time. No this shit! Time. Oh my god! <laughs> no way! And the whole thing was a fucking act. And they... We get a montage of them cleaning up, and we're still confused because it's like, wait, Paul seems like he's like now not scared of shit. He's brushing his teeth and changing his clothes. I get yeah. the other two. Like, what the fuck is going on? And this is uh, actually some of the first when they're doing the little makeup, um, them all unmake, getting out of their makeup, and it's faster cuts and it's almost on beat. Mm-hmm. Within they, there's really decent classical music that, as I talked about Donardo before, that that he would have access to that. And I'm like, mm-hmm. holy shit, there's some actual decent filmmaking going on here, right yeah. here. Yeah, and there will be later too. But this is- it's all of a sudden when it cuts into this. You're not what you were seeing isn't what you thought you were seeing is done very well through this little flash forward sequence of them taking their makeup off. Agreed. Tonally, this movie is not what I was thinking it was going to be. Uh, and it's evident in that sequence. Um, so they come down and he's like, hey, Casey. And I'm like, wait, well, who, who's Casey? And she's like, oh, hey, Jared. Uh, who's Jared? Paul and Stephanie. Oh, you're Casey and Jared and Robert now? Yeah, I'm still confused. Was there ever a Stephanie in this movie? No. Maybe. A baby. Maybe. Maybe. Table maybe. it, Jackie. Table it till the okay. end. Come okay. circle back to that. Don't forget. Um, and so casually it's revealed to us that this was all just an elaborate role play to spice up their marriage. Jared and K- Casey are, uh, you know, they've been in- together for a while and this is what they do. That he likes to role play. Jared is a is a douche. Jared is a douche. Yeah. Straight up. And he's pretending he had Robert pretend that he was Stephanie's mom, Casey's mom in this Cassie. whole bit. Huh? Yeah, it was his wife's mom that Ro- that Robert was supposed to be playing. What? That doesn't make no, you where are you? Yeah, because Stephanie they was said abducted. We don't. No, she never actually said if she was abducted. We just don't know that the man is playing Roberta. As Roberta is based off of the behaviors and actions of 
Casey's mom. Oh, oh okay. Mom. I, I got you. What you're saying, like so that was his totally... inspiration, not that he was playing her. So okay, right. this makes it so much worse. So then Jared's like, okay, let's do a role play where your mom traps us and makes us bang and watches. Yeah, your mom wants to watch you fuck. That's totally not weird. But if I would have been stuck in that situation and they explained it to me, I'd be like, oh, that's why you're all dressed normally. This is weirder than shit. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. I'm in. <laughs> God, just lead with that. Mom wants to watch you bang. I'm fine now. Okay. Freaky deaky. Um, all right. So uh, they like, good job, Robert. You were just wonderful in this whole sequence. Uh, here's your check, and we'll drive you to the airport. Uh, but on the way, they stop off at a gas station, and uh, Jared's being really weird in the car. He's like, <laughs> mop, 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 He's pretty And Robert's he's- trying to, to talk to him, and he just completely acts mop. like he's not even in. He's back there. Piece of carrots, piece of carrots, piece of carrots. Fair similitude. He's just enunciating. He's just yeah. working uh, on his enunciation. Uh, uh, uh. She sells she sourced by the sea shop. Uh. Titty, 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 titty. <laughs> she goes into the gas station, right. which does not look like a gas station at all. Not quite. And, and uh, is like, ahead. hey, some random dude. Why aren't we banging? We're having an affair and you're scratching your head. And later he works there, I guess, as the gas station attendant. But he just looks like a guy in somebody's house. Yeah. 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 When can we see each other again? Soon. No, not soon enough, Casey. Casey. Dogs start barking. Um. So they drive Robert to the airport and uh, I... Uh, I guess he banged her too. Yeah, she's banging everybody. Because he's like, kiss me as I leave and I'll remember our banging that we did at some point. Well, it's like, if you ever decide to leave that weirdo. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. Give me a call. And I'm like, she just paid you for sex, dude. I don't think that you're the caliber of guy she's looking for. She's obviously looking for somebody with some money. Mm-hmm. Not I you. I don't know if she did pay him for sex. She paid she him. They... She paid him to perform a uh, theatrical role so that she could have sex with her husband. I don't know if she paid. Like, here's your thirty bucks for the mustache ride. I don't. I don't think that happened. It's indirect payment of sex. How about that? Yeah. Okay. Probably still a little Epsteiny so at, on some level, but uh, you know. Uh, it's not, you know, I don't think that it would hold up in a court of law that that was prostitution, Jackie. Anyway, they go okay. home and it's now the first of <clears throat> the best parts of the movie when whenever Jared decides to do some solo role playing mm-hmm, mm-hmm. is pretty fucking fantastic. And uh, they're home. It's supposed to be average night. Like, okay, we had our little fun. And then all of a sudden, he's standing darkly in the doorway. It's really well done. And you're like, um, what the fuck? And Dun-dun-dun-dun. he's just ominously standing there forever. It cuts back a couple times. And she's like, oh, not again. And he's dressed up like Beethoven. Yeah. And he's she's like, I'm not, I'm not going to wear the dress. No. And then he just keeps shaking the ear horn at her like, I can't hear you, bitch. Just go put on the dress. This Remember is so good. She's like, no, not again. No Beethovening tonight. And he's just like, I Beethoven. S- silent, <laughs> not leaving the role of Beethoven until she finally breaks down. And is like, fine. We're Beethovening tonight. Put on the dress. Put on the dress. Put on the dress. Uh, so <laughs> she's like, I don't, it, her thing, her justification, like, I can't do the role playing thing anymore. Like, I've almost died like 60 times. 
like when we did the Jurassic Park thing and we had the animatronic dinosaurs and like one of them actually got a hold of me and they had sharp claws. Uh, and then we did uh, Jaws, Jaws the sexy play and you actually got Bruce the shark and we all know that Bruce didn't work very good and I had to climb into his mouth and you were like, hey, free use right there. <laughs> oh. Uh, and, uh, but it's Bruce and so I almost died from the mechanical shark. Uh, and then the time that you were... Uh, uh, the, the, the Seinfeld thing with the, with the junior mints, the sexy Seinfeld junior mint thing. And like, we actually got a surgeon and sliced into my tummy. Uh, uh, and then you, you porked me in front of the doctor while I had an incision. I almost died from blood loss. Meanwhile, Can't he's do not this anymore. breaking character one bit. He's still da, 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 da. When she's done with her tirade, he just shakes the ear horn at her like, I can't hear you. But he it, it, like to, he gives her a wad of cash and she's like, eh, <laughs> yeah, sure. he gets me <laughs> every time. Cash uh, talks and Beethoven doesn't. So now nighttime comes and in we find Robert of Roberta fame back in the house in the billiards room. Trying to steal the jewels because now he's a cat thief. Thief of cats. <laughs> cat burglar, you mean? Yeah, cat burglar. He's a burgle actor. Yeah, burglar. Yeah. <laughs> so together, uh, Stephanie's like, I hate my husband, but I want my money and uh, insurance and legal estate talk, lawyer stuff. Let's just kill him. Get it's worse money. than that. She like lays out an annuity plan for him where she's right, like, yeah. we're going to kill him and hide the body and I'll pay you 30 grand a year. I'm trust me. I'm getting the short end of this stick until mm -hmm. the, you know, he's gone and then I get the money, but you know, I'm good to be out for seven years or whatever. I'll give you 30 grand a year and uh, we'll reconvene after seven years. And he's like, okay, whatever. Well, how should we kill him? There's only one way. We got to stuff Jared in the incinerator. Wait a minute. Wait, what? Jer Jared? Jared goes in the incinerator? What the fuck? <laughs> Is Jared Stephanie? Oh, my God. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. Their plan is to stuff Jared in the incinerator. Yes. Put him in the furnace. I guess it's going to be a pretty big infer furnace. Uh, unless you chop him up into little bits, but then you got a mess that it's just not going to work. You're going to get found out that you're murderers. Yeah. It's also going to smell. It's a whole real bad. So you ever, bad. Have you, have you ever next, been next to the crematorium when they fire it up? No. Honestly. I have. It's bad. I bet. It's, it's people. It's So you breathe dead people? I did breathe dead people, Jackie. <laughs> uh, Sam got my joke. <laughs> Instead of I see dead people. No, I got it too. I get it. <laughs> Haley Joel. I see. Yeah. Bruce Willis was stinky the whole time. Uh oh. but yeah, no, it's dead people and it smells bad. But it also kind of makes you hungry. <laughs> oh. oh, come on. Hey, I'm just saying, you know, it's natural. Hmm. Go for one of those impossible burgers. They're people, right? Yeah. Because anybody in for some barbecue? <laughs> uh, yes, I'll have the Soylent Green Whopper, please. Uh, you mean the Impossible Burger? Same thing, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, they're like, no. If this would people, if this was people, it would taste way better. <laughs> yeah, these would be hotcakes, baby. <laughs> okay, and less expensive because the supply would be good. Lots of uh, lots of homeless people for a burger. King. All right, so I'm confused. <laughs> Sam's like, no, we're done. <laughs> now we're done with this. Uh, do they pretend to kill him and have the wrong guy before he starts Shakespearing all over the house, or does he Shakespeare all over the house first? He's Shakespearing all over the house first. Okay. Yes. Yes. So and when they're he they're on the Robert. fence about killing him until he starts Shakespearing all over the house, and they're like, no, let's fucking kill this guy. <laughs> Yeah, this well, guy's a fucking they, weirdo. They bang first in the house, and he spends the night, and she spends the night with him. Yeah, like there's, there's no, hey, where's, 
Where's Casey? And then he wakes up in the middle of the night. My wife's side of the bed is empty. I should go see if she's okay. Oh, she's being handled, at least. None he doesn't even notice because he's hamleting up and down the stairs for 17 hours straight, apparently. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Either way, I think this is like, I, I you know, I don't have a lot of experience in affairs because I've never had one. Uh, um, but I'm pretty sure rule number one is you don't spend the night in your house with the guy like, now you got to get out of here. You know, like the guy in the closet thing or you yeah. climb through the, the you know, back, the, he's a back door man. There's a whole word for it. She's like, nope, let's cuddle. Nothing bad yeah. will happen. I won't get found I, by my husband. And I'm pretty sure you don't have sex in your own house. You probably shouldn't do that either while your husband's wandering around, randomly opening up doors and saying, to be or not to be. Oh, you're getting bead. Ha 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 ha. And then walks out like this is the best case scenario. Huh. And this Hamlet thing is weird. Um, yeah, so, uh, he gets up, uh, 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 Robert, and he goes and starts taking pictures of all the loot, because I guess he's gonna actually just steal it. He's still cat burglaring, even though he's got a pretty sweet offer on the table. Yeah, he's getting pictures so that he can work his own side deal with a fence. Oh, right. Yeah, so he's gonna kill her, and then they're gonna bring a moving truck, and, and he's gonna, they're pretty much gonna raid the place, right? Take the most valuable stuff, and then sell it. Yeah, so there's now a fence involved. There's an external... And I believe the fence is actually Don Nardo. Oh, interesting. Uh, there's an external location in this whole caper. Let's just put a pin in that, that he leaves the house, goes and meets guys, a, a guy who's in a gym, who's getting trained in fake fashion because he's making his sexy ladies do all the actual training while the trainer's out of the room. There's He bought the gym part of the dialogue so that he can get into shape for God knows what. And instead he's making some guy exercise bike while booby ladies do whatever he wants. Feed him grapes and blow the fans on him. Yeah. But then when the doctor comes in, he's like, get off the bike. And he's like, I'm working so hard. Like the doctor's not stupid. She knows that you haven't been doing shit. Yeah. Yeah. Who's that? Who's that sweaty guy? Yeah. And why is your heartbeat so low? Um, okay, just want to put a pin in that. Um, so now it's eight o'clock. It's time to kill Jared. They meet up on the stairs and they walk to the bed and start beating the shit out of it with fire. Pokers. He hasn't dwarfed yet. No. Oh, did he dwarf? He might have dwarfed at some point. Yeah, the yeah, dwarf was another at this point. fun thing where he's in character so hard that he can't get out of it. And there's a couple really good shots where I laughed my ass off, but. Those the him not breaking character was was really funny, but yeah. It, they drag this corpse down to the stairs. They it, they've got the corpse wrapped up. It was in bed with the covers over its head. They beat it to death with fire pokers. There's and been then they talk of drugging up. people in their previous production. There's been talk of all this other stuff. Bludgeoning with fireplace tools is like the worst way to go here. Yeah, it'd be pretty rough. Like, you're not... And they're not. Like, you... when they hit him a number of times, he's like, that's enough. It's over. And I'm like, it's not. You didn't get the head. You hit he's the, getting you stitches. Hit the body. And you can't really... I mean, killing somebody with those would take forever and just Ever. be the awful, And it would awful be very painful, somebody. very messy, uh, lots of screaming, blood everywhere. You know, even if you don't puncture... You got internal bleeding, ribs inside of lungs, and all sorts of bad, bad. No, oh, this is a bad. Ugh. Fucking Goebbels would have a problem with this one. Yeah. Ugh. Okay. Um. So, uh, they take it. They take the corpse down to the furnace, and uh, he's just about to kill her with a block of wood when the lights flick on, and it's Jared standing there, and he's like, "Ha ha! Wait." They do the Spider-Man thing, meme, mm -hmm. and then they look down and unwrap the corpse, and it's the gas station attendant. Ha ha ha! To be or not to be a dead gas station attendant, Yorick. 
So they go upstairs and they're like, okay, what the fuck? And then he's like, by the way, Robert was going to kill you. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He does. And she's like, yes, son of a bitch. And he's like, eh, I had a fence. I was going to make like 87 grand instead of 60 million. Fuck it. Well, now Jared comes in with the rifle and he's like, uh, uh, he's Oh, yeah, they, he shows them the camera from the furnished room that Sam just talked about. Uh, and he's like, so now what we're going to do is we're going to play another little bit of a role where you guys are going to be the prey and I'm going to be the hunter. You might say yeah. you're deadly prey. Most or, dangerous uh, game. We're going to play the yep. most dangerous game role. And uh, it's that other uh, trying to think of that uh, chick, hot chick, uh, you guys are sorcerer babes in space or whatever. Um, from the year in review that uh, is the one that we all love so much and have forgotten completely you know, <coughs> several Sor weeks sorcerer, later. Sorcerer, sorcerer, babes in bikini hunts. Th that movie, something yeah, from beyond. That. Yeah, from Slave Girls Boobs. from Beyond. That's yeah. the okay. That's the ticket that that podcast in the future likes. What's a podcast? I don't know. I'm just saying words. Said Jared. Um. Uh, so he's gonna hunt him, and they run around. And, and he's dressed up as a safari guy. Yeah. yeah. Right. Maji. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. In character. And, yes, of course he is. He's Jared. Um, they run around the house. There's no escape. All the doors are locked still. Um, and then they start getting into like, I'm going to kill you, you son of a bitch. How dare you try to kill me, you bastard. Uh, this fighting actually, slap fights. And I didn't notice it until the movie's over, but it plays in. There's some actual foreshadowing when he when this happens through this sequence because as they're being chased and there's sort of hijinks aplenty at one point, Robert runs into the kitchen to grab a knife and the entire kitchen is just props, right? That it's yeah. not a real kitchen. And you're like, what the fuck? Those are just props. This is really kind of weird. Mm hmm. But he gets trip wired and, uh, uh, Casey, she wants to go get a gun. And so she ditches him. They break up. They split up several times and then they reunite. Uh, he ends up or she ends up in the dumbwaiter or something. And it's a cage. And she can't get out of the dumbwaiter. Yeah. And so he she's like, I I know where a secret passageway is. I'll take you there uh, if you get me out of this dumbwaiter. And he's like, OK. And then she goes out of the dumbwaiter and out the of that room. And she, he's like, aren't you going to go to the escape room, the secret passageway? She's like, yeah, I don't know where that is. I forgot where Wait, it is. And she's like, you said that just, this is actual dialogue from the movies, but you said you knew the secret page. She's like, I do. I just don't know where it is. Well, I'm going to kill you then. No, no, I, I can find it. I just not right this second, though. All right. That sounds fine. <laughs> okay. Well, Jared, he, he has left scissors behind for Casey in a yeah. mirror like uh, medicine cabinet looking for these scissors. And uh, uh, this is post her trying to beat Robert to death with a shoe, mm -hmm. which doesn't work very good at all. Who throws a shoe? So Robert's chased into this uh, into the attic and he finds. Oh, Casey trapped in the dumbwaiter already did that. Uh, they team up and find the sort of passageway. Uh, they can't find it. They split up again. Uh, she opens the door and finds Robert slipping on a bunch of marbles. And then he like. Falls on something sharp that is unidentifiable. Yeah. And it sticks in his back. And then he gets all pissed off. So she stabs the shit out of him with the scissors. And at some mm -hmm. point, like a little garden trowel gets stuck into him as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what that thing that you don't know what that is, it's actually um, a metal base. And then it has one single rod that comes up the top and it's got a really sharp top. So you're supposed to put the receipts or yeah, it's, it's a note holder. Things, yeah. Ah. So once the things are done, you put it on there and then back you in, empty back it at the, the end of the day. Put it on your desk next to the picture of your kids and be like, ha ha, I've accomplished this task. Let me just check my records. Uh, there's a guy's lungs on here. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Get it? Yeah, I did that today. Mm -hmm. um, so he's dead. And uh, then Casey runs to uh, the Iron Maiden room and Jared's, Jared's there. And he makes her get into the Iron Maiden at gunpoint. And she's like, oh, no. And then my next note is shenanigans. Because shenanigans. Shenanigans. 
They're all dead. So uh, he shoots her. Robert, there's some struggle between Robert him and was Robert. Not dead. He's still who's okay not all the way fight. dead yet, but he's on his way out. Uh-huh. And he figures he's going to take one of these son- or both of these sons of bitches with him. She gets shot in the leg, so she can't move and is crushed by the dumb waiter. Robert just falls over and right. dies. And Jared tumbles into the Iron Maiden, which is closing and can't stop it from closing and dies. It's insane. Like, this sequence is so like, wait, what? Whoa, what? What? Holy shit. Shenanigans. That's all you can say. They're all dead. Yeah. Or not. Or not. God damn it. And they, they c- jump cut to the future. They're all in this room. Like one of those sunrooms where you eat the, where British people eat their egg in a cup. Like, hey, honey. And they got OJ and they're reading the newspaper. It's, you know, like a breakfast sunroom, whatever. <laughs> It's a breakfast nook, dude. Yeah, yeah, but they've got a tape machine there, and they're watching themselves on tape, and they're like, what, as they all die, and they're like, oh, ho, ho, greatest performance yet, gang. So they're not, he's not a douche, they're all douches. Yep. This is the and annual they- douche potluck and movie making event of the year that they do every year. That isn't a movie. It's not like, ha ha, great performance. We made a great movie. We're, okay, call Corman. We're, we're going to sell this one. We finally got it right. Uh, well, let's shop this thing. We'll show it at Cannes. Uh, we'll show it at uh, the the Robert Redford thing that hasn't started happening yet, Sundance. Uh, and uh, it's going to be a cold hit. We're going to be the next fucking, uh, but it's I don't know, not. good movie. It's like them just doing this for their own jollies. And what's weird, I had to think about this for a while. We get a different point of view than they get in their own fake movie world of fake movie. Mm -hmm. Every time they're watching their footage of their acting performance, it's done as if it's from security footage from the cameras. Whereas we actually have the point of view as if we're a fourth wall in all of their shenanigans. They Which, themselves are just doing a theatrical performance and enjoying the clips done by the video cameras that are there for security purposes. Which is such a fine point on this movie because even like big budget, big name people in movies where they show footage that have already been if from a previous scene that already happened it's always from the camera because they've got that footage we don't need to shoot it twice we've got the fucking we'll just show the same thing that already happened or like it's out in yeah. space uh, like oh hey what? we're watching this out happen out in space how'd you get a camera out in space you fucking assholes what are we watching right now we're watching now right now in space we're balls. watching the movie the footage but they, this film doesn't do that yeah and i was like nice nice because they didn't make a movie about making a movie they are doing the the writing is all about the authenticity of the theater and because they didn't make a movie they just sort of recorded their performance it holds that level of integrity inside of itself but i think it actually goes even further than that sam because i think the security camera footage that they show was the scene we get to see, they didn't shoot it twice with different camera angles. They shot that shit the exact same time with two different cameras. And yeah. we're just seeing the security camera footage from the actual scene that we actually saw. Yes. The, the take, I should say. That's fucking Scorsese shit. Nice. Tip of the hat to you, mm-hmm. Donardo. 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 Uh, they all get in their cars and they leave fucking separately. And then, yeah, the fourth wall gets broken again because who is it that looks at the camera and like winks? At, oh, it was one of the henchmen. Yeah, the henchmen. The guy that actually works at the mansion that they rent every year. <sighs> so they leave in separate cars. Meaning, and she's like, see you guys later. Someday, when we do this again, S- Casey and Jared are not, are not married. married. He's not even Jared. He's like Mike or something. Did they say some name? I didn't. I don't think they. So him said and the name. guy that plays the gas station guy gets names because they're a gay couple. By the end, that's of it. true. Yeah, yeah. He's but nobody not else dead. gets names really. 
We don't know if Robert's Robert. We don't know if Cassie is Cassie. Or Stephanie. Maybe she was. She was Stephanie never the whole Stephanie. Time. She was Stephanie for like ten minutes. Or maybe she is Stephanie. I don't know. Uh, we're, I mean, that's what I got. Were any of them named or just characters? And is this still just them being characters? No, this is. There had to be some level of realism, and so I feel like the we're, fourth wall gets broken. Sam, that's who's. True. Whose fourth wall is getting broken? Is this just another performance that within a performance within a performance? Maybe, but I say no. The fourth feel like wall we're gets finally broken. Off the, we're finally off the roller coaster, and the fourth wall breaking is just the final wink to ah ha ha. These are just actors or something. That have the ability to break the fourth wall like they're fucking Deadpool. Well, the or one that guy, guy is, is actually in the looking movie. at a camera. Now, not an actor. He's just a guy that works at the mansion. Who looks into a camera and winks at us. Yeah. As if he's looking into a camera and winking at the other side, implying that he's still playing a role. Sure, maybe. I think it's not not over. It's not over. Swamp Thing shows up and then. Yep. Yep. I think it's like looking into a mirror with a mirror behind you. It just goes on forever. All right. Fine. That's that's my that's my film theory. Uh, I think that the fight between the the supposedly gay couple, because now I'm not sure that they really are. That's the next setup. Could be that they're going for. Could be. I mean, it, this this is it's not it's not monster go go because it does happen. It but does at happen. The same time. Does it happen? Because you want to ask like any of these questions like, well, was she actually scared of dying? Because she fucking died in this one. She got crushed by a dumbwaiter. I mean, it was a prop, but maybe it is too much. No, it's not because we don't even know who this person is. We just know that they have access to money and people and other locations to have things that aren't on film to establish a story like a gym with booby ladies in it. Mm-hmm. It's fucking insane. So I, I can't ask anything because none of it's real. Or is it? Ah, okay, what do you mean? So I think at this point I can just say safely that it's pretty well written. I think it's a dangerous yep. subject. And I remember when I would teach labs and video that there was always one to two dickheads that couldn't figure out what they were going to do for their last project. And the project was always, I can't figure out what I'm going to do. So I'm going to make it about not figuring out what I'm going to do and turning that into a movie and making the movie about the movie when you have no skills to make a movie. And it dodges all of the sort of movie about a movie or movie about a performance pitfalls Mm -hmm. that can be dodged. And it does because of that last bit, it, holds its own message about the realistic integrity and all that. And so I think, yeah, it wasn't very expensive and nobody else was going to buy it by, but trauma. But for the most part, you just couldn't do any better than what they did here. No, no. I mean, let's, let's, there's lots of twist movies out there, right? Uh, But let's just go ahead and address the most famous one of all that people somehow like the sixth sense, but Hey, we did. That's weird. We Bring it that up it. again. Uh, the the twist is in the title. He's got a sixth sense. It's not a secret. It's no. right fucking there in the front of your face Shyamalan the whole time, stoopies. Things are like beating you in the face with a two by four until you're like, oh, what a thing. And I'm like, I figured it out in the first 10 minutes. Damn it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nobody's talking to him, huh? Anyways, uh, this is called Stuff Stephanie and the Incinerator. And even Stephanie if it was, doesn't even exist. If it was, and that's the trauma name. The original name was In Deadly Heat. But even one or the other, it doesn't really matter. It's not about that. It's No, it's not about that. And you look at the cover, different. it's got... Uh, uh, you know, it's a it's a painting. It's not you know a clip or anything. It's you it's cool ye oldy time painted poster. Uh, it's got a lady bent over in front of a incinerator and a guy walking up like he's about to kick her right in the ass and she's gonna go in the incinerator. It is this movie is not what you signed up for. No, it's and not. I am way happy that it's not. 
Yeah, and I think that's one of the other reasons why Kaufman is not uh, sort of upset about misrepresenting it and putting it in the catalog that way, because no matter what, if you would have bought this from the trauma catalog, you wouldn't have been pissed off. No, I. it is a pleasant surprise to be like, that is not what I was expecting. You know, I was thinking like uh, the slime bowlerama, something like that, you something. know, uh, uh, ladies being chased around by a, a guy who just wants to kick their ass into an incinerator drama ask but this is uh, this is a fucking wild fucking ride and if it was you know if i would have seen this when i was in the video store days and as a young man mm-hmm. this would have been one that like i would have got it it would have been entirely misrepresented i would have watched it and not cared that it was misrepresented i probably would have watched this one twice before i brought it back to the video store yeah uh, yeah, it's freaking crazy. Jackie, any questions? No, it's just, um, I guess it's just one of those things where uh, I'm with both of you. I, by the end of it, I was like, you know what? I didn't see this coming at all. I am pleasantly surprised. And, it, you know, I, I'm glad I watched this. It's like, awesome. Like, think about April Fool's Day. That's another really like, huh. Uh, you know, I was expecting a yeah. slasher movie along all the other horror movies that have to take place on holidays, you know, thematically. Uh, that's still not even approaching. It's it's also in the title. Ha ha, April Fool's Day. Yeah. Uh, surprise. Um, this is just. I, I mean, I think it would have still been an interesting movie if they had renamed it, you know, Lover's Delight or, or not, no, that would, would never work. Uh, Murder of a Trist or some shit like that. Um, Beethoven's I, I would have been fancy like, of death. Yeah. Wow. That was fucking wild shit. It being called stuff. Stephanie in the incinerator is like, that's the fucking hook, man. He fucking that's genius level shit right there to get me to be like, fuck. Yes. Fuck. Yes. Mm-hmm. On this movie. Great. Okay. Final recommendations. Uh, Sam. Yes, watch it. I just said I would have watched it twice, and I did watch it twice. Um, So it's also, I can say safely that this is the best movie I've ever seen that was shot on the beta cam format. Because most beta cam movies don't make it out of the town that they were made in. So, Would you say that it's the highest quality uh, trauma release you've ever seen? No. Okay. Well, fuck, I don't know. Toxic the Avenger argued. 3 has a real production aesthetic to it. Oh, it does. It does. But I think it could be argued. I think it could be argued. I, again, it's so weird because I just most of these beta cam movies, it's like their friends, they, they float around the town that they're in, but they never make it farther than that. And there's only so many movies that were shot on the news cam format that make that see the light of day. So it's hard for mm-hmm. me to say it's because of the video format. It, it's difficult. But it's very well done, and it may be the I I haven't seen a better written trauma film. Let's say that. There you go. There you go, Jackie. Well, I already said yes. Um, you know, when we were talking earlier, I was just very entertained and didn't see it coming, and that's kind of rare. Like Sam was saying, like mm-hmm. oh, I figured it out in the first ten minutes, right? Like I knew Roberta wasn't a lady, right? Right, but I didn't realize that this was a weirdos role play of a role play by a bunch of rich weirdos. Like, I just didn't see it coming and I, I really thoroughly enjoyed it. I, I would say absolutely do this one. Was it ever about sex? No, no, I think that, no, I think that these, this group is a bunch of goddamn weirdos that fuck each other on a weekend, but they feel bad about it. So that they disguise it as a role playing thing where it's a game that they all come together every year and do the least dangerous so that, game. Yeah. Yeah. So that everybody gets to fuck Stephanie. Wobbly H. Yo. You can break a hip. Um, I absolutely give it a do. Um, it's wild. Uh, I think I've said everything as well before. Um, but yeah, recommend it to your friends. This would be a good double feature with just about any other, uh, dead and buried. This would go really well with dead and buried. I don't know. Dead and buried so heavy versus this one. I feel like dead and buried really needs like if 
you were going to do Dead and Buried, you need something else that has a real biting gravity to it. Because the gravity on Dead and Buried is actually pretty fucking awesome. Whereas this one, okay. it's a real mind bender, but there is no psychological gravity like there is. I hold Dead and Buried as one of the most psychologically heavy movies I've ever seen. All right. Um, what do we got? Uh, Return of the Living Dead 3? That one? Sure. Yeah. Okay. It's fun. It's fun. It's a fun movie. Totally fun. Light and airy and, and weird and wild. Uh, this week, uh, we do have a little bit of listener feedback on the Facebooks. Um, go ahead and uh, if you ever want to shout at us, uh, facebook.com forward slash Stinger Madness. You can also do that. Uh, subscribe to us on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Stinger Madness. Uh, watch our videos on YouTube and comment on them. Thank you, JR, for all the work that you've been doing lately on that uh, at uh, youtube.com forward slash Stinger Madness. But this one is on the Facebook. It's from a listener called Jason Reeves. Uh, he recommends Stinger Madness, or they do. Uh, this show is a gem of the internet. They constantly find weird, bad, good movies, and all versions in between. Good, good, bad, good, good, bad. Observations, and uh, there's sometimes it's bad, bad. And sometimes uh, it's bad, bad. Bad, yeah, Rollerball. Bad. Yep. Rollerball uh, is bad. Uh, uh, Mortal Kombat and I, I, I should. Observations and thoughtful conversations about the themes of each movie and their impact on modern culture make for a solid format, but that's not their secret sauce. Some premium humor, but related jokes, and amazing suggestions on what to watch. That is 100% the nicest and most well written review of this podcast ever. that has ever existed. Ever exists. And it actually is what we're doing. That's really well done. Yeah, Thank very you. Very observant. It's right like, hey, hey, man, you figured out Tartuffe. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Well done. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's that's it. That is it right there. I mean, I, I could paint that on a billboard for Sticker Madness. That's the quote, baby. Thank you very much, Jason. Incredibly nice and well um, thought out, I guess. Well said. You're the one, actually, that is Tartuffe. You, you wrote it because you did yeah. it right then, buddy. Bernays um, is far too saucy for a lady's maid. <laughs> okay uh next week on the show uh what are we doing sam's pick oh shit i forgot what i was gonna do can you imagine that uh or were you faking that you forgot what you're gonna do because you really do know and this is all an act <laughs> this is the plot twist yeah Okay, uh, Sam will have something, right, we hope. Otherwise, it's going to be a real weird episode next week. Uh, <laughs> you guys, <laughs> you guys and gals, uh, be good out there and get to the chopper.